Hey, welcome to the Event Answer Studio. Today I want to show you how to make this charming circle balloon backdrop, which is a great addition for showers or parties. And it all starts with three different colors of balloons. Now I'm using green and sand colored balloon kits I got off of Amazon. And this is a great way to get all three sizes of balloons we need in a relatively inexpensive packaging and you're not having to buy full bags of each size and each color. Now in addition to those two kits, I'm also accenting this with some Qualitex chrome gold balloons in 11 inches and 7 inches in size. Now the thing to keep in mind whenever you use a balloon kit off of Amazon is you don't necessarily know the quality of balloon that's in those packages. So these balloons have a very obvious dimple on the end which just means it's a little darker in color and the balloons are maybe a little thinner. A couple of these balloons did pop on me while I was inflating and assembling this garland and I didn't pop any of the Qualitex balloons. If I were making a backdrop like this for a client I would only use name brand balloons I trust. But depending on your expectations and budget for your party or event, a balloon kit from Amazon may be a great choice for you. Just always be sure to read the reviews of each kit as the balloon quality can vary greatly from kit to kit. For today's backdrop, I'm going to be assembling all of my larger size balloons into clusters of eight balloons each. Now I'm going to make two clusters that include a 16 inch balloon as well as 11 inch balloons and then all the rest of those clusters will only be made up of 11 inch balloons. I'm inflating all my balloons two at a time, making sure the larger balloon is always on the trigger side of my electric balloon inflator. Then I'm going to let a little bit of air out of that 16 inch balloon and press down on it to make it nice and round. Next I'm going to tie the two together into a pair by wrapping the nozzles around twice and tying them together in a simple knot. I'm going to do the same thing with all the rest of my 11 inch balloons, inflating them anywhere between 7 inches and 11 inches in size before tying them all into pairs as well. Repeat this step with both the green and gold balloons so that they're all tied into pairs and ready to turn into clusters. Each cluster is made up of four pairs, so take your first two pairs and overlap them so that the nozzles touch in the center, and then twist one balloon from each of those pairs around each other, and that will lock it into a quad. Now to this quad, we're going to add our next pair, sliding it in so that the nozzles touch the nozzles of our quad, and then wrap those two new balloons all the way around so that they're touching each other, and then twist those two around each other. Our main goal here is to make sure all of the nozzles of our cluster are right in the center. To this, we're going to add our fourth pair in the exact same way, and it may take a little bit of manhandling, but if you press the cluster against you, you can push those balloons around and get the new balloons that you just added to touch each other and then wrap them around each other. In both the sand and green colors, I'll have two clusters that have a 16 inch balloon in them, and then four clusters that are only made up of 11 inch balloons. And then for my gold clusters, those are all strictly made from 11 inch balloons, as I didn't have any 16 inch balloons in that color. In these balloon kits, there were only four 16 inch balloons in each color. So I decided to tie two of those 16 inch balloons up into clusters and I kept the other two free so that I can tie them individually into the backdrop exactly where I want an accent. So I'm gonna inflate it just like I did the other one and tie it off, but to the nozzle of these balloons, I'm gonna take an empty 260 that I've cut in half and tie it to the nozzle of my 16 inch balloon. This empty 260 will give me an easy way to tie this into the backdrop later on. Now we need to inflate our 5 inch balloon accents. So all of the 5 inch balloons I'm going to use a hand pump to inflate to 4 pumps of air or 4.5 inches in diameter. To speed this process up I'm going to inflate them two at a time. So tuck the nozzle of the first balloon under your finger that's holding the pump and inflate the second balloon to 4 pumps of air as well before tying them together into a pair. So just like we did with the larger balloons, wrap the nozzle around twice and tie them together in a simple knot. Now if you're not confident inflating these two at a time, you could always tie them off individually before tying them together into pairs. Next we need to join all those pairs together into quads. So overlap them so that the nozzles touch in the center and then twist one balloon from each pair around each other and that will lock them together into a quad. Now we're going to take two of these quads of the same color and then we're going to take a 260 that we've cut in half and tie one quad to each end of that 260. So if you put your fingers around the nozzles of that quad and you pinch the end of that 260, pull the balloon tight and then wrap it in a figure eight pattern around two of the balloons in that quad, it'll hold it to the very end without having to make a knot. Do the exact same thing to the other end and now you have a mini cluster that we can add in really easily to our backdrop. 
I made four of these mini clusters in each of the colors with the gold balloons inflated to 10 pumps of air or six inches in diameter. So now that we have all of the balloons inflated, we can attach them to our circle backdrop frame. The one I'm using today is seven and a half feet in diameter and it just fits into my living room, which has an eight foot ceiling. So to best suit this space, I'm gonna be assembling my balloons in a moon shape and not all the way around the frame. My backdrop stand is held together with these wing nuts, but I don't want any of my balloons getting caught on these or potentially popping. So I'm gonna cover all of these with a little bit of clear packaging tape. So I'm just gonna take a couple inches and rub it right over the top. You won't be able to see this and it'll protect my balloons. Starting on the bottom left side of my circle arch, I'm gonna begin adding balloon clusters just above the foot. So take the first cluster and wedge it right onto the frame so that the nozzles of that cluster are touching the frame. Now you could always just slip this on and leave it there, but if you're going to be setting up your backdrop anywhere someone might bump into it or outside, you'll want to secure your balloons all the way around the frame by taking two balloons that are on either side of the frame and wrapping them around each other, and this will lock the cluster to that frame. Then I'm gonna scooch the cluster down so it's covering up most of the foot of the frame before moving on to adding the next cluster, which is the sand color. Now I'm gonna slip it over the frame just like I did the green one and securing two balloons around each other so it's locked to the frame. Now the important thing is to make sure we're snugging each cluster really close to each other so that there's not a lot of large gapping and you can't see the frame peeking through the balloons. I'm gonna follow this up with the gold cluster before moving back to a green cluster. To give this backdrop more of an organic look, I'm adding one of my 16 inch clusters on here next. So you've got that large balloon facing the front. Now to also add to this random effect, I'm going to add a second green cluster right on top. By varying the size of the balloons as well as the color clusters, we're able to add to that organic nature and make the overall design more visually interesting to look at. I'm gonna keep adding balloon clusters up the left side of my arch until I get about two feet from the very top of my circle backdrop. There are so many different balloon layouts you can do on a circle backdrop like this. When picking a layout, you wanna think about not only aesthetics, but practicality. So my living room is only eight feet tall and my backdrop stand is seven and a half feet. Now I could take balloons all the way around this frame, but they would be squished up against the ceiling and that's not really an aesthetic I would like. So I decided to go for this moon shape and only take my balloons most of the way up the left side and then a little bit up the right side, giving me an asymmetrical look, which looks looks beautiful, but it also works really well in this space. When adding balloons to the bottom of our circle arch, we have to change up our attachment approach because that frame gets so close to the floor. To secure the clusters in place, I'm gonna tie an empty 260 balloon to a couple places along the base of that frame, and then use the tail ends of that 260 balloon to secure my cluster in place. So once you've got it tied to the frame, Place your balloon cluster right where you'd like it, making sure that it's snugged really tight to the frame, and then you're gonna stretch out the tail end of that 260 and wrap it around a couple of the balloons in the cluster. I attached three clusters to the frame in this way, and if there was a little bit of extra tail after wrapping it around the balloon cluster, I would then take it and wrap it around balloons of the cluster next to it so that my cluster stayed really nice and tightly together, and this gave me a great foundation for adding more balloons later on. So once I had all three of those secured, I then went back to my original method of securing my clusters to the frame until I got about a third of the way up the right side of the circle. To give my basic moon shape a little bit of drama, I'm gonna add a flared out skirt to the base. And this will not only cover the feet of my stand, but it'll give me a lot of volume and interest at the base of my stand. So I'm gonna take all of my remaining clusters and tie an empty 260 into the nozzles of each of those clusters. Now you could tie a knot directly to the nozzles, or if you wrap the 260 around a couple of the balloons in that cluster, it'll hold onto it just fine. Then I'm gonna place the cluster about where I think I want it to be, and then stretch out that 260 and wrap it around a couple of the balloons that are already attached to the frame. I'm then going to wrap it back around the balloons in the cluster that I'm adding for extra strength. Now, because we're adding all of these extra clusters using 260s, it allows them to move around. So as we continue to add balloons and clusters, we can move those elements around until we're satisfied with their placement. There's no right or wrong way to add balloons into a skirt like this, and I think that's the beautiful nature of making an organic display. You can let your own creativity and vision run wild with a setup like this, with time and materials being your only limiting factor. 
the main piece of advice I would give is to frequently take a step back from your display so you can see the overall look and you don't get too caught up in placing each individual balloon. I have found that it's better to get the balloon clusters placed generally where I want them, get the small clusters added, and then I can go back and finesse all of the little pieces until I'm happy with the final look. Now that all the large balloons are in place, we can finally add our small balloon cluster accents. So I'm going to take the 260 that's between those small balloons and wrap it behind one of the balloons that's attached to the frame. The important thing here is just to make sure that 260 balloon is hidden from sight, and then you can play around with the placement of those little balloons. I like to place these mini clusters anywhere I've got gaps in my garland or anywhere I need a little bit more texture or interest. So here on the end, I want to have these little balloons at the very end of my moon shape to help bridge the gap between the balloons and the frame. With all the balloons in place, it's time to add the final element, which is this faux eucalyptus garland. Now this garland is six and a half feet long and it's pretty thin. So I'm gonna be using four of these across the bare frame between each balloon end. And I'll be securing those in place with some black zip ties. So I'm gonna take two of these garlands and take the very end and nestle it down between the balloons where they won't be seen. Then I'll hold those in place with one of the black zip ties snugged nice and tight around the end of the garland. Then I'm going to take both of those strands and wrap them in different directions around my frame. So one strand I'm going to go clockwise and the other strand I'm going to wrap counterclockwise around my frame. This will make the greenery look nice and full and I'm less likely to have open gaps of frame without any greenery on it. At the halfway point of these greenery garlands, I'm going to secure it to the frame with a zip tie so that it doesn't droop down the frame. When adding the zip tie, I want to make sure I'm only capturing the main stem of the garland and not all of the loose leaves because we don't want to flatten the leaves to the frame. We only want to capture what is the most structurally important parts. So pull away all of the extra leaves out of your way so you don't get it caught in a zip tie. Then take a pair of snippers or scissors and cut away the remaining tail of the zip tie. Now I'm going to keep wrapping my garlands until I get to the end and add another zip tie at that point, but this length isn't quite enough to reach the balloons and that's where the second set of garlands comes in. So I'm going to attach these garlands nestled into the balloons at the top of the frame just like I did at the bottom. And the most important thing here is to make sure the direction that the leaves are pointing is the same direction as our first two garlands. So that way they don't intersect with each other and it looks like one continuous garland all the way around. Once I've got all the ends secured, I'm then going to go through and fluff out all the leaves that might have gotten caught and move the garland around so I don't have large sections of the frame showing through. This gorgeous backdrop makes a stunning addition to any party or event. If you enjoyed today's project, hit that like button, subscribe below, and if you'd like to see another circle backdrop setup, you should check out this video next. So until the next video, remember, stay creative everybody! Bye!